Hi guys, it's John again with another benchmark test between the S22 Ultra Exynos 2200 versus the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. So as always, these phones are set up exactly the same way. They are both currently on the December update, and I'll put the version number down in the description below just so you can see and compare with your own version. I've got them set both to 80% brightness, and we've got the thermal monitoring widget in the bottom right corner. Keep an eye on the battery life as always, as that's always an interesting one. And we'll start with the Geekbench CPU test and we'll move on from there. So slightly annoyingly, the Geekbench CPU results now go into a web browser, but I still managed to get them, obviously, um, as you can see here. So not too much of interest on the Exynos here, just a slight increase of two and five percent. Obviously, as we're in winter at the moment, the temperature in the office here is a lot cooler, so the phone is running cooler. Now, the Snapdragon, on the other hand, has had a nice 12% increase on its multi-core, so it's getting ever closer to the Exynos, but it's still not quite as good multi-core still as the Exynos 2200. So we have to see if they can squeeze any more life out of the 8 Gen 1 before the S23 gets released. Let's move on now to the Geekbench compute test and we'll see how they compare there. Okay, so again, nothing too interesting here, just a 5% increase on both, which is nice, but it is just down to the cooler temperatures in the office, like I say, during the winter here. So the average score is still a lot higher on the Exynos 2200 with 8,954 versus 6,356 on the 8 Gen 1. Temperature-wise, both around the same temperature, so nothing really exciting to talk about here in the Geekbench compute test. Let's move on now to the anti benchmark. We'll run through in a row and we'll see what the scores come out as. Okay, so it's a lot closer this month actually compared to previous months here. We can see that the Exynos has just fallen behind by about 6,000 marks here, just under 6,000 with 880,902 versus the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with 886,613. Now they're both running version 9.5.0 as you can see. Now the website is very odd and I will just go to the website actually and we will have a look. Now you can see here, even if I download the 9.55 version, it's showing now on both 9.5.0, which last month it wasn't showing the correct version number on either. So I don't know what's going on with the version numbering here, but at least they're both saying 9.5.0. So I've left it as that in the spreadsheet. So we will just stick with that for the time being until it updates on the screen itself. But it is the latest version that was downloaded. So yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of an odd one really, but we'll leave it as 9.5.0 here 
in our spreadsheet. So yeah, nothing too interesting there. They didn't get as warm, obviously, as they did last month with a high of 36 degrees each on the, after the third test there, so not too bad at all. But again, nothing too exciting there. We'll now move on to the stress test and we'll compare the results side by side as always. Okay, so December's results are starting a lot much better than November's results here. We can see the clock down here down at one and a half gigahertz, whereas here it does dip to one and a half gig around here, but it does pop back up here to just under two gigahertz for that core seven there. So again, not amazing, but uh, not too bad. And the performance also not terrible, but it does dip to around 60% here at this section of the test, but then goes back up to around 80%. So anything 80% and above is great to see. So that's quite good for test one. Now test two seems to do almost the opposite of that. As you can see here, we're starting around 80% and all looking good. And suddenly, boom, there goes our clock down to about 1.5 gigahertz. And then our performance is around 60%. So yeah, not very good there for test two. Test three, however, doesn't look as bad. We can see that the clock starts a bit lower at about 1.9 gigahertz with the performance just around 75 to 80% and then dripping down here to around 60% as the clock goes down to 1.5 gigahertz. And then again, towards the end of the test, it goes back up and starts performing really well at around 70 to 80%, a couple of dips or peaks there up to 100, but nothing too exciting there. So no major performance boost there in the December update for the Exynos. We see here compared to last month, for example, it was actually performing, I'd say, a lot better in the third test. And in fact, probably in all tests at around 80%, apart from the second test there, around 70%. But yeah, it was a lot better performing in the November update, I'd say, than it is in the current December update. Now, I wouldn't say I've seen any bugs or glitches particularly, but uh, I have seen some issues with the camera since the December update, where when you're recording a 60 FPS video, it looks like it's running at about 30 FPS on the screen. Now the video does come out okay, but yeah, th there are a few glitches in the December update, so that could also be affecting the performance. So moving on to the Snapdragon, and it's always nice to see the Snapdragon and it's sort of 80 to 90% performance here. It's doing really well throughout most of the tests. So test two, again, slightly lower here, but then test three, it's just going around 80% for most tests. A few dips down to 65, 70, but overall it's a much better graph than the Exynos, I'd say. Performance wise as well, we see the three gigahertz mark here, which we haven't even seen on the Snapdragon, on the Exynos, sorry, for quite a long time. So yeah, that just says it all really. The CPU of the 8 Gen 1 is still performing better in the Antutu tests than it is in the Exynos. So apart from the third test here where we see the performance get clocked down as it warms up a bit more, down to the sort of 1.8 gigahertz mark for the Core 7 there. But yeah, overall it's pretty good. I'd say it's actually better than it was in November. You can see here, between 80 and 60 most of the time. But here we've definitely got more peaks over 80, I'd say in the December update. So I'd say an overall improvement there for the Snapdragon when you compare the peaks here in the previous month, which were just only going over 80 a couple of times. So yeah, much better performance there for the Snapdragon this month compared to November. Okay, so let's move on to the Wildlife Extreme stress test and see how they both get on there.
Okay, so no change here. We've still got the best loop going to the Snapdragon and the lowest loop also still sticks with the Snapdragon with this just a slight one degree increase in temperature. But the stability obviously goes to the 2200 as it was running lower speeds, it was more stable. So stability versus sort of raw power, I guess. And yeah, it depends if you're a gamer. If you're a gamer, you're gonna still want to go with the 8 Gen 1. But if you want battery life and uh, general stability, obviously you can see here the Exynos 2200 is the one to go for. We'll just go on to the slingshot the stream test now and we'll see how they do there. Okay, so these Slingshot Extreme tests are in and we've got a few more tests here going to the 8 Gen 1 this month. So we see the first four tests, both graphic tests and both of the first two physics tests are going to the 8 Gen 1 and the final physics test is going to the 2200. So it's quite an interesting one there. You can see the increase there of 7% on the 8 Gen 1 compared to last month. And I think this is probably down to the fact that because the 8 Gen 1 runs quite hot, it does prefer these cooler temperatures and it is now able to keep up with the pace, certainly in the physics tests, with the 2200. So that's quite an interesting one there to see this sort of swing turnaround for the 8 Gen 1 there. And it's nice to see that it is doing really well in the Slingshot Extreme test now. So we can have a look at all the results on a page here and we can see here that the total number of wins has now gone to the 8 Gen 1 with 8 wins out of all the tests compared to the 2200's 4 wins. So it's quite a big change here compared to last month where they were pretty much even Stevens. There's now a big difference here in the phones and whereas we're used to Exynos is running really hot the Exynos is actually running cooler still, but now that the Snapdragon can also run cooler because of the cooler weather, it's actually performing a lot better than it was in the previous month. So it does seem to be that the 8 Gen 1 likes the winter, whereas that was the sort of joke of the Exynos in the 2100, for example. But the 2200 has just been beavering away at its sort of normal pace here. But now that the Snapdragon can run cooler, it is actually performing a lot better. So it's going to be interesting to see, because I do believe it's going to get a bit colder as well here, see how they both do in the even colder temperatures. And as always, just let me know what your thoughts are down below and how your scores are going. I know that people always tend to get better scores than me, so it is interesting to see what you guys get. So don't forget the battery life difference here as well in this test. You can see that they ended here with a 10% difference, so the Exynos having 10% more battery life left than the Snapdragon. So that is still a factor for you, or if it is still a factor for you, then the Exynos is still a much more efficient phone to go with. Now, I still use it every day because of the fact it does last longer. So until the Snapdragon, hopefully in the Gen 8 Gen 2 maybe, gets more efficient and battery you know, friendly, I'm gonna have to stick with the Exynos 2200 for that extra battery life. So let's just wait and see what Samsung do with the January update and see if they can get any more performance out of these two phones. There's only a couple of months left now, obviously, until the S23 comes out. So hopefully they will continue, like I say, to just tweak things as much as they can in readiness for the S23, but we'll have to wait and see, obviously, if that is the case. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I have got the gaming test still on the way, so don't forget that will be coming soon. I'm gonna re-record it because I did all the Exynos tests, but then I was away for a bit and uh, there's been so many updates to the games. I'm just gonna start again from fresh and uh, yeah, just retest all the games and yeah, just do some good performance testing there with both phones to see which of the graphical processors is the best out of the bunch. So don't forget to subscribe for that. Leave any comments you have down below. Thanks again for watching. Hope you had a good holiday and a good new year, and I will see you in the next one.